This fourth meeting of the Public Utility Commission for calendar year 2013 and ask that you join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The uh, first item on this morning's agenda is the approval of the minutes from the January 24th meeting. And Commissioner Gardner, I believe you are the editor of the minutes. I am indeed. Uh, I have reviewed the minutes of the January 24th, 2013 public meeting and move that they be approved as submitted. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the minutes of the January 24th meeting are approved. And it's a pleasure to welcome to the podium to officially begin this morning's public meeting, uh, Ms. Cheryl Walker Davis. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. Good, Good morning. morning. May it please this honorable commission, on behalf of your various offices and bureaus, we present for your consideration and disposition the following agenda items commencing this morning with matters on behalf of the Office of Special Assistance. It is recommended in omnibus fashion that the commission adopt all items commencing with the application of the City of Pittsburgh on page one and continuing with the items appearing on pages two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven through and including the interconnection agreement of the United Telephone, DBA Century Link, and Exo Communications. <coughs> So move. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the uh, motion passes unanimously. On behalf of the Bureau of Technical Utility Services, and we would note that both uh, technical utility services agenda items, those pertaining to transportation matters as well as fixed utility matters, have now been combined into one presentation <coughs> as opposed to two. It is recommended in omnibus fashion that the Commission adopt all <coughs> items commencing with the application of MX LLC at the top of page 12 and continuing through and including the items on pages 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 through and including the security certificate proceeding involving Choice One Communications. So move. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Turning now to matters presented on behalf of the Law Bureau, Mr. Chairman, we recommend the adoption here of two items. We recommend the adoption of the first item pertaining to the Verizon Pennsylvania LLC uh, audit recommendations <coughs> pertaining to their network modernization plan uh, and reporting metrics. Uh, also, we'd like to jump to the last item on page 20 with regard to the joint petition for declaratory order of the Office of Consumer Advocate and David Ebersol, uh, uh, indicating <coughs> that Verizon has not met its legal obligation to the Greensburg Community Service Area re regarding the deployment of advanced services. We would note here the statement of Commissioner Cawley, which pertains to both of these proceedings, and the statement of Commissioner Whitmer pertaining to the OCA and David Ebersol joint petition for declaratory order. So moved. Second. I'd like to recognize Commissioner Cawley for purposes of his statement. Commissioner Cawley. My uh, statement applies to both of these matters. And uh, I am voting no on both of these matters. I'd like my statement to be included in the record as if I had read it in its entirety. The actual statement is too long for me to burden anyone with, but uh, I'll give you the plain English version. I, I know I do not have to be apologetic about voting no occasionally. Uh, I'm reluctant to do that because we are a collegial body and we get along uh, and we try very hard to be unanimous in our decisions. But I am going to have to uh, subject my colleagues to uh, my disagreement with the result here. This is my 14th year as a uh, Pennsylvania Public Utility Commissioner. This decision is one of the most important that this commission has ever made or ever will make. And yet I believe we are doing it on a 
grossly inadequate record. Uh, it's a case of first impression, uh, and it affects not only the customers uh, in the Greensburg area, but uh, all other customers of Verizon and Verizon North. Consistent with my earlier dissent when we issued a tentative order in this case, um, this adjudication of the OCA Ebersol petition uh, involves a bona fide retail request for broadband access services by Verizon Pennsylvania end users in the Greensburg so-called customer service area. Uh, I believe that it should have resulted from a proceeding to amend Verizon Pennsylvania's Chapter 30 Network Modernization Plan. I think that's what the statute requires because it provides due process uh, and an opportunity for a much more complete record than what we have here, which is merely a petition for a declaratory order. There's virtually no record here, and yet we're making a very sweeping endorsement uh, for the use of wireless to provide service rather than uh, landline service. By this order today, Verizon Pennsylvania is essentially permitted to unilaterally amend its network modernization plan without any due process. And then merely, after the fact, report such amendments to us in its biennial network moderniza modernization plan reporting. Through this process, Verizon Pennsylvania is able to effectively delegate its responsibilities under Chapter 30 uh, and uh, to delegate those responsibilities to Verizon Wireless, an affiliate. And as I think everybody in this room knows, we do not under federal and state law, we do not have any jurisdiction over Verizon Wireless. I seriously doubt uh, that we will be able to police the last two years of Verizon's obligation to deploy broadband in this Commonwealth as a result. And I don't think that the legislature intended uh, Verizon Pennsylvania to receive effectively automatic rate increases for some years now and indefinitely into the future uh, so that it may delegate those responsibilities to Verizon Wireless, even though it is paying Verizon Wireless to build out the towers ostensibly uh, in order to provide adequate service uh, to customers who otherwise would have received landline digital subscriber line service. My colleagues, to their credit, have uh, expressed their concerns in the order which will result uh, from our vote today. Um, but that's all the order does, is express concern without uh, addressing the real issue, and that is, is this lawful? I, I don't believe it is. I disagree with the premise that Verizon Pennsylvania and Verizon Wireless in their arrangement uh, that they have concocted is a true joint venture under Pennsylvania law. The order uh, uh, that will ensue here uh, interprets the words joint venture very broadly when in fact it, I believe it has very specific meaning in Pennsylvania law. Uh, and in fact there's a whole body of law on what, uh, what a joint venture is. I, I, I think that what has been entered into here, which is not a part of the record by the way, there really is no record, uh, and, and th this agreement they've entered to is not a true joint venture agreement. Uh, and even if it were, 
uh, I don't believe that we should let the tail wag the dog because as far as I can see, if Verizon and Verizon Wireless decide to amend their agreement and merely report to us after the fact what they've done, uh, they're determining the outcome here without us being able to control it. Had we had a proper amendment of the network modernization plan with due process, we would have had this agreement on the record and an opportunity for parties to challenge it legally and factually. As is, we don't have that. Last but not least, um, <coughs> I'm not convinced that there will be no cross-subsidization between Verizon Pennsylvania's non-competitive regulated operations and its arrangement with Verizon Wireless that provides unregulated wireless services in the marketplace. In other words, Verizon Pennsylvania is paying Verizon Wireless to build out the towers. Those towers can be used by Verizon Wireless for a lot of other service besides fulfilling Chapter 30 obligations for, for Verizon Pennsylvania. Nowhere, because we don't have a record, uh, have we looked into the cross-subsidization issues here, where captive landline customers are going to effectively be required to build out Verizon Wireless's towers for them, which they can use for every other service. I find Verizon Pennsylvania's legal and substantive explanations uh, on this issue to be totally unpersuasive. Thus, the issue should have received, in my view, a much more in-depth examination, and we should not have reached any ruling in this case, particularly as sweeping as this endorsement of this whole arrangement now and forever is, without examining the broader implications of the issues that were raised by this declaratory order petition. So. Uh, as decided today, uh, I think Verizon Pennsylvania is given sweeping and I think unwarranted authority to delegate its responsibilities to Verizon Wireless, which I do not believe was the intention of the legislature uh, because we do not have any control over Verizon Wireless and we, therefore we cannot uh, have adequate, uh, we have inadequate ability to enforce uh, the Chapter 30 obligations of Verizon Pennsylvania. For these reasons, I truly, to my colleagues, I truly respectfully dissent uh, from these two orders. Thank you, Commissioner Call. I'd now like to recognize Commissioner Whitmer for purposes of her statement. Commissioner Whitmer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I don't normally read the entirety of my statements or motions, but I believe that the actions of the company towards the customer warrants it. So settle in. <clears throat> Before us today is consideration of the filed comments and final order in the petition of David K. Ebersole, Jr. and the Office of Consumer Advocate for a declaratory order concerning a bona fide retail request for the Greensburg Community Service Area from Verizon, Pennsylvania. The Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission issued a tentative order in this matter on December 26, 2012, which denied the petition but requested additional information from Verizon Pennsylvania and other interested parties on the issues raised in the docket. In this case, Mr. Ebersol served as an aggregator to submit a, BF a BFRR to Verizon PA so the broadband service would be deployed in the customer service area in accordance with the provisions of Chapter 30. In July 2010, the affected customers requested that Verizon Pennsylvania provide to them broadband access through digital subscriber line service. As permitted by Chapter 30, Verizon Pennsylvania listed the Greensburg CSA BFRRR on its deployment schedule as a major build. In accordance with the statute, this particular project was to be completed within two years or by July 2012. Over the course of the next two years, Verizon Pennsylvania and the Greensburg CSA customers communicated on several occasions that certain engineering work and construction would be necessary to provide DSL service over Verizon PA's network to the Greensburg community. During these communications, Verizon Pennsylvania continually assured the affected customers that the deployment of DSL service, not fourth generation long-term evolution, was to be completed on time. In response to the Commission's questions in its December 26, 2012 tentative order, 
Verizon Pennsylvania indicated that during the fourth quarter of 2011, it had begun to explore the possibility of satisfying this BFRR project with fourth generation long term evolution, a wireless broadband service to be provided by Verizon Wireless. Verizon also indicated that a final decision to move forward with 4G LTE deployment for this community was made in the first quarter of 2012. Verizon further stated that Verizon Wireless had deployed 4G LTE in portions of the general service area, including offering service to some but not all portions of the Greensburg CSA. There was additional construction items to be accomplished by Verizon Pennsylvania and Verizon Wireless in order to provide 4G LTE to the entire community. Interestingly, Verizon considered the use of a different, te different technology in the fourth quarter of 2011, made a final decision to move forward in the first quarter of 2012, and yet never informed the Greensburg customers of the decision. Although I do not degree, disagree with Verizon's decision to deploy 4G LTE <coughs> rather than DSL to the Greensburg residents, it's the lack of concern for these customers and the actions of the company that I find truly objectionable. I believe that Verizon Pennsylvania was required to provide certain information to the Greensburg CSA customers as soon as the company had made the final decision to provide 4G LTE to this community. The provisions of Chapter 30 at Section 3014 clearly set forth Verizon Pennsylvania's requirements to inform BFRR customers in a written communication of the applicable rate, the contract term, the status of the request, and a term subscription agreement for execution when the company decided to provide a technology that was different from the original request. In addition, although the statutory provisions are clear, I find it incredulous that, from a basic customer service perspective, that the company did not communicate with these customers in a timely manner at the beginning of 2012 to inform them of the changes in technology that would be deployed and to ensure that customers knew the type of broadband access service they would receive. Rather, Verizon Pennsylvania waited until July 13, 2012, a mere two days before the service took effect, to inform the customers of the deployment of 4G LTE in their community. Mr. Ebersol stated in his September 2012 affidavit that he received a phone call on approximately July 14, 2012 from Verizon Pennsylvania indicating that broadband was now available as a result of the BFRR program and the broadband technology was wireless 4G LTE. Mr. Ebersol stated that there was no opportunity to sign up for the service, there was no description of this, and there was no description of the service. I hope that this case will serve as an illustration to Verizon Pennsylvania how not to provide customer service to its customers, including those that have engaged in the BFRR process to receive broadband service under Chapter 30. I also strongly recommend that Verizon Pennsylvania vastly improve its customer communications in the future when there are changes in deployment strategies to satisfy pending or future BFRR requests. Further, I, remind, I remain concerned about the customer protections that are provided by Verizon Pennsylvania in its joint venture with Verizon Wireless to provide 4G LTE to BFRR customers as well as the areas of Pennsylvania waiting for broadband service. As indicated by Verizon Pennsylvania in its above referenced responses, Verizon Wireless will be the entity to address any billing and or service quality issues that customers may experience with this service. I wish to remind Verizon Pennsylvania that Chapter 30 requires the local exchange company to deploy broadband service throughout the entire Commonwealth and provides other requirements for local exchange companies that should, be, that should have been adhered to in this BFRR situation. I wish this commission could have done more to provide a remedy to the Greensburg customers in this case. I strongly believe that Verizon Pennsylvania could have and was required to do a better job at providing information to this Greensburg community and should have utilized sound customer service practices in addressing the customer's request. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Whitmer. Any further discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, recognize Commissioner Gardner. I'd like to be associated with the statement of Commissioner Whitmer. So noted. Again, any further discussion? 
We're going to note the objection of uh, Commissioner Cawley, and I believe the motion passes four to one, noting the dissenting statement of Commissioner Cawley and the statement of Commissioner Whitmer. <clears throat> Continuing with the presentation of agenda items, it is recommended that the commission adopt at the bottom of page 19 the staff recommendation with regard to the advance notice of final rulemaking pertaining to uh, gas supplier regulations, noting the verbal statements of Commissioner Whitman. So moved. Second. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> um, I am pleased to see that this item is back before us today. Uh, I believe that it's appropriate for our regulation to review our re regulations from time to time. The regulations we approve uh, for comment today, I think, will better align our natural gas supplier requirements with those of our electric suppliers. And I look forward to seeing uh, the feedback from all of the interested parties. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Whitmer. Any further discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. And we're going to turn to page 20 of the agenda for the yes. first case. Go ahead. Yes, Mr. Chairman. It is recommended that the Commission adopt the first case at the top of page 20 pertaining to the natural gas pipeline replacement and performance plans. So move. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Having already considered the next item at the beginning of this section, we will now proceed in omnibus fashion with the recommendation that the Commission adopt all items on pages 21 and 22 through and including the 1307E reconciliation statement uh, pilot program. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Now, turning to matters on behalf of the Office of Administrative Law Judge, we recommend the adoption of the first item pertaining to ALJ Poyer's initial decision in the proceeding involving Donald Martin versus Verizon. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. With regard to the settlement of the rate case proceeding involving the Reimer Gas Company, there is your motion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I'd like to have my motion entered into the record as it read in its entirety. We'll read a portion of it here this morning. Before the commission today for disposition is the recommended decision in the above ca uh, captioned matter concerning a requested change in rates for Herman Reimer Gas Company. The recommended decision uh, approval of a joint petition for settlement filed by the company, the Bureau of Investigation and Enforcement, and the Office of Consumer Advocate. The settlement states very clearly that Reimer should be permitted to file a tariff supplement to effectuate the agreed to rate increase and to become effective on one day's notice following the entry of a commission order approving this settlement. In ordering paragraph one of the recommended decision, the ALJ recommends that the joint petition for settlement be approved without modification. However, in ordering paragraph two, it states that Reimer shall be permitted to file a tariff supplement to become effective on one day's notice after the entry of the commission's order approving the joint petition for service rendered on or after May 1st of calendar year 2013. The phrase for service rendered on or after May 1st of 2013 is not contained in the settlement and limits Reimer ability to implement the agreed upon rate increase. Because of this and because the inclusions of the phrase is inconsistent with the ALJ's recommended decision to adopt the settlement without modification, the recommended decision here this morning should be modified and this phrase should be struck. Therefore, I move this morning that the Office of Special Assistance prepare opinion and order consistent with this motion. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. It is recommended that the Commission adopt the last item on page 23 pertaining to the uh, Pennsylvania Electric Company proceeding, as well as all matters appearing on pages 24 and 25 through and including ALJ Colwell's recommendation in the UGI Utilities 1307E proceeding. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, that concludes the presentation of regular agenda items turning out to the carry-in agenda. We recommend the adoption of the recommendation on behalf of the Office of Special Assistance with regard to the Pico Energy Company's petition. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. On behalf of the Bureau of Technical Utility Services, we recommend the adoption of staff's recommendation pertaining to the application of Valley Energy uh, to provide service to a silent township, noting the statement of Commissioner Gardner. 
So moved. Second. I'd like to recognize Commissioner Gardner for purposes of a statement. Commissioner Gardner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like for my statement to be entered into the record as if I read it in its entirety. <laughs> Today, the Commission considers the application filed by Valley Energy, one of our smaller natural gas distribution companies, to extend the service territory into Asylum Township, Bradford County. By approving this application, we, we will allow Valley Energy to provide natural gas service to one of the Commonwealth's newest natural gas fuel uh, power generation plant, the Moxie Liberty Power Plant. This is a win-win situation for all involved and a great example of what can be achieved now that Pennsylvania has access to abundant and afford affordable Marsalis Shell natural gas supply. Asylum Township in Pennsylvania gained a more efficient and environmentally sound form of power generation in the Moxie plant, and Valley Energy gains the type of customer that will guarantee its continued success. I had the pleasure of touring Valley Energy's operation last April and discussing management philosophy with his president, Robert Crocker. I was impressed with Mr. Crocker's leadership of the utility and this deal with Moxie tells me that, what I, that I was right to be impressed. Valley Energy may be one of our smaller natural gas companies, but it is a, it is a first rate operation. I strongly approve, support approving Valley's application. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gardner, and uh, I'll associate myself with your statement because if you said it's a first-class operation, we trust you on that. <laughs> Any further discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I would also like to associate myself with uh, Commissioner Gardner's statement. So noted. Any other takers? <laughs> Very popular this morning, Commissioner Gardner, as always. Uh, we hear no objections here this morning. The motion passes unanimously. That concludes our public meeting, but we have a very special, two special announcements, and I'd like to recognize Vice Chairman Coleman for one uh, that we're very excited about. And before I introduce him, I'd like our team communications group uh, to stand and be recognized for your efforts. I know you're bashful, but thank you for, for what we're going to announce here this morning. <laughs> Vice Chairman Coleman. Thank you, Chairman. Tom, that includes you as well. You're uh, welcome to stand and be recognized this morning. <clears throat> as the Chairman indicated, we have a very special announcement this morning. Um, quietly this morning at 9.35, without great ceremony, the Utility Commission launched its Facebook page and Twitter uh, account. So for those of you who don't get enough of us every other week here at public meeting, you can now follow us on Twitter and uh, friend us on Facebook page. So if you're, you're curious and uh, not quite sure how to, uh, how to connect, go to our, uh, our web page and you can click on to either the Facebook page icon and friend us, or you can click on to the Twitter page. Our handle is at PA underscore PUC. So uh, we'll look forward to all of you uh, joining us, following us on Twitter, and friending us on Facebook. So thank you to our communication team for doing a great job. Thank you. And I should note for the record, uh, I think we're ahead of Pico on this in our launch of social media. Um, let me, uh, that was only a term of endearment, by the way, uh, <laughs> as a customer. Uh, now I'd like to recognize, Cheryl, we have a very special day planned here with uh, Black History Month, and um, we, uh, we are the lead organization here and the lead state agency in planning a, um, just a terrific uh, event. And Cheryl, I'd like you to make an announcement on today's celebration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As noted, the PUC is the lead agency of 18 entities, including 17 state agencies in Dolphin County, in presenting this Black History Month uh, a tribute. Uh, the program will start this morning uh, at 11.30 in the Forum Auditorium. There are pre-program activities that are going to include uh, a, some Civil War reenactors, Harrisburg High School drumline, and some vocalists. That's just to get the audience warmed up. The Commissioner Gordon is welcome <laughs> during the regular program, uh, as well as a, um, a dramatic presentation uh, that was written by our very own Fred Miles. Uh, and the stage set is going to be phenomenal. This year's uh, theme is at the crossroads of freedom and equality, celebrating the Emancipation Proclamation and the March on Washington. And actually the program is going to profile uh, Abraham Lincoln, and we have the renowned Jim Getty out of Gettysburg uh, appearing as Abraham Lincoln, as well as um, a local talent, 
uh, Michael Joyner, who will be who will be appearing as um, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. We also have Nathaniel Gadsden, who's going to be the voice of the founder of Black History Month, uh, Carter G. Woodson. Um, after that, we move, and I do have to say, the set is phenomenal. Right now, there are two caskets on the stage at the forum, so it's definitely worth getting over to see. Uh, that will be followed by um, a lunch in the atrium of the Keystone Building, a lunch and fashion show. Um, all of the items have been donated by local merchants. Uh, so this is a time when we get together and celebrate uh, being American and the contributions of African Americans to that process, and everyone is invited to attend. Cheryl, thank you. Um, before we adjourn, I understand Commissioner Cauley will st uh, be here after public meeting to re re uh, read the remaining seven pages of his statement. <laughs> and uh, on that note, we're adjourned.